feel very well. The others were still at it when I left. Couldn't stand the pace. No, I had to come to work, didn't I? They'd all got day off. Reckon they were going to carry on all night. I remember my Dave's stag night. Well, at least the state of him the next day. He'd slept in a bush, lost his shoes, and his pockets were full of chips. I swear I could still smell salt and vinegar at the altar. He was getting married anyway. Len Tebby. Is he? Surprised at that. Well, he's a bit of a free spirit. What's that? Free spirits? Make mine a large one. Oh, I am never drinking again, ever. You've hung <laughs> one on you by the looks of it. I hope you're fit for work today. I'm ready for you, Nurse Beaumont. Now, please. Hey, it's only my dedication to duty what stopped me getting well and truly sozzled. The lads were dancing on tables in Cock and Sparrow. Uncle Harry's place? Well, they're probably still there knowing him. Mm, sounds like Harry. Well, come on then, let's have you. Sunny. Well, yesterday my life rain. Sunny. You smile at me really easy pain. Oh, the dark is a done. Right this year, my son and one shine so sincere, sunny one so true. I learned wrong again. No, it can't be. No, I've tried every combination there is. Excuse me. Two mil syringe, hypodermic needles, scalpel, toothed and non tooth dissecting forceps, stitch holder, stitch scissors. Artery forceps, blunt hook, aneurysm needle, tube of cat gut, black silk. It's incumbent on me to make sure that standards are maintained, and maintain them I will. Look and learn. We'll come back to this. This one first, if we can get them straight onto the bed. I know them. This one's Lee Campbell. Right. Eddie, what on earth have you been up to? I don't know. Oh, I do. A bit on the drink and a right binge too, I guess. You can say that again. We'll take some bloods and put them in a glucose strip. Oxygen, please, straight away. Lee, can you hear me? Lee! You're a rare, rare find. You 
Better be in trouble. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Ada Hubble. <laughs> Was last time I looked. Who are you? Dr. Ulmerod. Um, I believe you used to be one of Dr. Always' patients. Did I? Oh, well, if you say so. <laughs> I've not seen a doctor for a while. Oh, yes, well, so uh, our records would show. Uh, we did send you a letter. Several letters, actually, suggesting that you come in for a checkup. Uh, well, I don't get out too often. Besides, there's nothing wrong with me. Still, you'll come in for a cup of now, you hear? <laughs> so I leave the way to making me be. Alan, aren't you? He was with you last night. Oh, that's right. So there was a few good-looking nurses. You weren't wrong. I'd say that as a compliment if you weren't so drunk. Well, you know, it was a stag night. We had a few. It's, it's traditional. A few? Were you locked in a brewery? Mm. That's an idea for next time. Thank you, nurse. The nun. Nursing nun. Whatever, whatever you want. I can see you're the brains of the outfit. Don't tell me. You're the best man. That's me. <clears throat> That's a range of night to remember, didn't I? Mm. You did that all right. Elizabeth Shy. <laughs> ah, yep. That's it. <laughs> we don't get much in the way of company. Old Bernie Grantham brings me up a few bits and pieces when he's working in the next field. <laughs> we do all right for ourselves, don't we, Ellie? <laughs> Dear, almonds took in. I'm fine, thanks. Oh, go on, they're good for you. All right. Mm. Mm. There you go. Exactly when was the last time you went out? Into town, for instance. Oh, let me think now. It must be 46 years, give or take. <laughs> That's quite some time. I'm a bit of a home bird. <laughs> yes. Yes, I can see that. And, um, well, how are you, health-wise? Oh, I can't grumble. I couldn't help notice that you, um, have a limp. Well, that's only to be expected. I'm getting on a bit, you know. <laughs> but I, I can cope. <laughs> I don't suppose it'll be for much longer, anyway. <laughs> what happened? Your friend's got a bit carried away. I was putting it mildly. These two aren't so bad. Get them shifted onto the ward soon. Here, drink this. What is it? Water. It'll do you a lot more good than what you were on last night. This isn't like them. The matron's got it in for me. I felt like such a fool. Dr. Goodwin must think I'm an idiot. Oh, am I ready for my day off tomorrow? You all right? <sighs> Not really. You'll be fine. She wants to talk to Dr. Weatherall just to check on you better sit down. Thank you. Good morning. Sebastian, I know you were back in these parts. Uh, just passing through. Well, wouldn't expect anything else. What have you been up to? Oh, no, this and that. Uh, I, uh, I had to come in. What's up? Not ill, are you? No, 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 not me, no. They, those uh, boys that were brought in, Rod, no, Mods, they call themselves. I raised the alarm. Well, it's lucky you did. You're right skinful by the sounds of things. Yes, yes, but is that all it is? What do you mean? God knows I've known some drinkers in my time, Kenneth, but I am convinced there's more inside them than just booze. Yes, it's, um... It's gangrene, all right. Is that what it is? <laughs> I did wonder. It really is very serious, Ada. The condition is brought about by poor circulation. Unfortunately, at, uh, at this stage, I'm afraid you're going to have to lose the toe. Have it removed. Oh, it seems like a lot of fuss to go to. Well, it's uh, 
quite a straightforward operation. You'll only be in hospital for a couple of days. Is that right? It's marvellous what you lot can do these days. <laughs> I think I'll give it a miss, thanks. Ada, you really do need to have this operation. If you don't, the gangrene will spread. If we do nothing, you could lose the leg. Your life, even. Well, I'm heading that way anyway, Doctor. I didn't think I'd live forever. No. Next time I leave this place, they'll be carrying me out in my box. <laughs> You'll have another almond. You've got to think about this, Ada. You really have. My mind's made up. Well, I'm glad to see you getting through those. I can't manage the nuts myself. I can suck the sugar off, but that's my limit. Mm. Ellie's the same. <laughs> OK, Dom. How are you feeling? Where am I? You're in the hospital. Can you see me clearly? Yeah, it's fuzzy. Everything's fuzzy. Something isn't right here. No, this one isn't responding to you well at all. What were they drinking last night? I might be able to help you, though. I've just been talking to an expert, Sebastian. He found them and he reckons he's seen these symptoms before. Soul shits of his. I'm not too fussy about what they drink. Meths, for instance. Methyl alcohol poisoning. That's what I was thinking. Why would they have drunk something like that? I don't know. But they were drinking in my brother-in-law's pub last night, but... Harry wouldn't sell dodgy booze. He's not the type. Are we talking moonshine here? OK, they need to stomach wash out as soon as possible and prepare a 10 ml IV injection of 8.4% sodium bicarbonate. What about Len? Well, who's Len? Uh, he's the groom. He's not here. I thought he'd be sleeping it off somewhere, but... Well, if this is serious, maybe we should go and look for him. If he's drunk the same as his mates, we need to find him. Fast. <laughs> Been on to the police about our missing patient. Nobody's seen him since last night. They're going to organise a search. Good. Well, thanks for letting us know. Doctor, what happened to you? Don't ask. Well, they said you had a full house. Need any help? No, they've had a stomach washout and an IV injection of sodium bicarbonate. Well, what about whiskey? Good idea. I'll get on to it. Whiskey? For you or for them? <laughs> uh, well, as much as I'm tempted, it's for them. One pub measure every hour. Fine. I think we've had enough for one day, don't you? It impairs the metabolism of methanol to formic acid. Toxic formic acid. That's the stuff that's doing the damage. Yes, well, you seem to have everything under control. But do you, uh, do you mind if I just slip off? I need to chase something out. No, feel free. OK. Doctor. Sorry to put you on the spot, but this uh, formic acid, what does it do? Friends of yours, aren't they? Yeah, that's right. Well, uh, the main problem is that it can't be broken down by the body. It attacks the optic nerves and causes blindness, amongst other things. What other things? Well, it upsets the acid-base balance, causing metabolic acidosis, which I'm afraid can be fatal. But that all depends on how much the individual's drunk and well, how quickly they get treatment. OK. Right, we'd better pay Harry a visit. Find out about this booze once and for all. Are we taking Van? Yeah, why? Well, the lad's scooters are still on clifftop. I'd hate for him to get pinched on top of everything else. Right, we'll pick him up on the way back. Thanks. I used to be able to dance all night, but I haven't got the energy anymore. My legs just give up. That can't be right. I'm only 24. Well, maybe you've been overdoing it. How often do you practice? Every evening, usually, but we've had this last week off work, so we could do a bit more. Brian thinks there's a few moves we need to iron out. It sounds like a lot of time and effort. This competition must be very important to you. It is. If we get through this stage, we're into the nationals. Brian reckons we can go all the way. He thinks we can even get on come dancing if we pull the stops out. Does he? Is that what you want? Of course. But we're not going to get very far with me feeling like this. No, OK. Um... Could you just give me your hand a moment? Right, I want you to squeeze that as tightly as you can till I tell you to stop, right? Do you think something is wrong with me? I'm not sure yet. 
The toe's got to go. There's just no two ways about it. But are you sure she doesn't realise the gravity of the situation? At the end of the day, it's her decision. Well, only if she's mentally competent to make that decision. Exactly. You don't think she is? Go to her house. See for yourself. There's rubbish everywhere. You can hardly move for piles of newspapers, unopened... Diogenes all... syndrome. It doesn't come within the Mental Health Act, so it's not usually certifiable. I doubt that I could section her just because of that. Lucy, she needs this op. Now, I don't want to have to force her to come in here, but she's going to be in big trouble unless we do something. OK, I'll take a look, but I'm not promising anything. Thank you. Oh, and uh, stay clear of the old ones. Sorry? I'll explain on the way there. But if that doesn't convince you she's balmy, nothing will. That wasn't very good, was it? I could feel my grip loosening. Something's not right. Well, it's hard to say at this point. Sometimes you feel things are going to go wrong, and they do. Is there anything else that you're particularly anxious about at the moment, apart from your ballroom dancing? No. Tell me about Brian. How'd you get on? Oh, we, we're just dance partners. It's, it's not a romantic relationship. Is that how you'd like it to stay? <laughs> Sorry, probably none of my business. No, I... No, I do like him. A lot. I want to make him happy. That's why this competition's so important. Well, don't try too hard to make him happy. No man is worth making yourself ill over. You need to think about you at the moment. You need to just pamper yourself. Just take a while to, to relax. And if you don't feel better in a few days, then do come back and see me, OK? You amaze me, Nurse Beaumont, you really do. Did I get it right? Oh, no. I'm simply amazed that you managed to remember to put one foot in front of the other when you're walking. Oops. Not quite there yet, then. Not there, Doctor. I'm not convinced she's here, even. But you will be. You will get this right if it's the last thing I do. But it's not fair. I can't be good at everything. What? Come on, Annie. It's me you're talking to. Remember that stuff you brought round last Christmas? You didn't get that from the brewery? That went ages ago. There's nothing wrong with my boots. Alan's mates were itching to carry on the party after they left it, yeah? Well, don't you tell me you didn't flog them something to help them on the way. All right. All right. I did give him a bottle of something. He gave it all solely. Come on, Ken. I sold it. I've got a business to run here. Not for much longer if you've been supplying dodgy booze. <coughs> There's nothing wrong with it. It's a bit potent, I'll admit, but it's not harmful. What else can I do to prove it to you? What are you doing? Taking a sample of this. A scientific analysis. Oh, right. Come on, before he gets back. Thank you. Bye bye. Oh, <laughs> hello, Doctor. <laughs> Twice in one day, you are keen. <laughs> and you brought a young lady with you. How nice. <laughs> You've been here a long time, then. Oh, I was born here in this very room. <laughs> That's a nice outfit. Is that what they're wearing these days? Unless I've got it wrong. <laughs> don't you fancy looking in the shops? The town centre's not far, you know. I don't need anything new. What I've got will see me out. <laughs> you don't like throwing things away, do you, Ada? You never know when they might come in handy. And I've got room. <laughs> well, only just. What are you planning on doing with all the papers? Reading them, of course. I like to go back over them now and then, in case I forget anything. It must be hard to keep the place clean with all this in here. It's not good for your health, you know. We get by, me and Ellie. <laughs> You're very independent, Ada. Some might even say just a little stubborn. Now, I've told Dr Klein that you've refused to come to the hospital for the operation. 
He tells tales, doesn't he? <laughs> Mind you, don't tell him your secrets. I won't. Do you realise what it means if you don't have this operation? He says I could lose my leg, die even. Well, you don't want to die, do you? No, but I don't suppose it's up to me. All I can do is decide how to live my life while I've got it. I'm happy in this house. And I'll not leave it, not for a toe, not for a leg even. I know what you're worried about, love, but there's no need. I know what I'm doing, <laughs> and I'm not mad. Daft, maybe, but not mad. You tell him that, will you? <laughs> well, that's settled, then. <laughs> Have another almond. <laughs> he likes these. <laughs> Lens. It's pride and joy. Look at that. Aye. He did it last week as a surprise to Shirley. She's meant to see it after the wedding. He said he's going to ride off into the sunset with her. Well, that was the plan anyway. Where the hell is he? Top up. Oh, do I have to my head? It hurts. Yes, you do. There you are. What have you done? You stupid. Excuse me. These men are sick. Sick in the head, more like. I warned Len about having you as his best man. Surely I... You can't be trusting any spears. You're bad news. I'm warning you. If anything happens to it. Come on, this isn't doing anyone any good. Gangrenous toe, you say? Uh, yes, that's right. And the stubborn old duck is resisting your legendary charm. Hmm? Well, seems simple enough to me. If the mountain won't come to Mohammed, Mohammed will come to the mountain. What do you mean? Perform the operation at her home? Why not? Ada's house is in a terrible state. It's not the most sterile of environments. It's all something on. But you've got to get the equipment up there. She lives miles from anywhere. Nothing wrong with a stiff walk to start the day. Good idea if you came along, too. Could be rather traumatic for the old bird. Best to keep an eye on her. I'll certainly come. I want to make sure she's happy with the arrangement. Jolly good. We need to borrow a nurse for the morning. I'll organise a couple of pack horses. Depart from here at uh, 0900 hours. Splendid. See you then. What have we got here, then? Uh, well, the scooters, Mr. Arthur. I can see that. What's that one doing in the van? Um, we're looking after them, uh, a favour for friends of Alan's. You know, the lads that are in casualty. That van is for the transportation of goods and apparatus for the sole use of this hospital. It's not a storage facility. Get them both off the hospital site. Do I make myself clear? Crystal? <laughs> what are we going to do? Oh, we'll find somewhere. Ah, just the bods I need. It's nice to be wanted, Mr. Rose. I've requisitioned your services for a field operation tomorrow, leaving at 0900 sharp. Field operation? Will that be military or surgical? Bit of both, Ken. Bit of both. Oh, and bring a tent with you. So, you slept on the beach last night? Yes. The night was warm. I slept beneath an infinity of stars. Song of the sea at my ear. <laughs> Where else would I want to be? You don't change. Nor do you. I suppose... 
I suppose it's too late for us to start changing now. Those boys were lucky you were there. I only wish I could have seen where the other went. There is nothing more tragic than the loss of a young life. Sorry, I'm being pessimistic. I'm sure you'll turn up. I hope so. But you're right. There's nothing more tragic. <coughs> Help me! Somebody please! Help me! <coughs> so tell me what happened, Eddie. What do you mean? After you left the pub. I need to know everything. We went to the beach, uh, lit a fire, cooked some sausages, um, and we'd already had a lot to drink, so we didn't get round to drinking vodka till, um, I don't know, nearly dawn. Did you all drink from the same bottle? No, I, um, I did, like, a sort of cocktail. We were flagging a bit, and I just thought it gives a bit of a lift. But it's my fault. Harry gave us something dodgy, you know. I sent the vodka for some tests. There was nothing wrong with it. Yeah, that can't be right. Well, it is right, Eddie, so there's only one conclusion. You must have drank something else. Look, Lee's already in a serious condition. Len's yet to be found. Are you sure there's nothing you want to tell me? Just told you everything I know. Hi, hi. Ah, uh, hot cake. I've been doing some thinking. It seems your brother-in-law's in the clear. Dr Goodwin's had the results. Well, that is something. Apparently one possibility is that a quantity of industrial alcohol might have been added to spice up a less potent drink. Admittedly, the perpetrator would have to be a fairly reckless and dim-witted individual. But you'll understand I can't rule out the possibility that the said industrial alcohol might have originated from these premises. Are you implying that he's nicked some? Or that I might have helped him? Hey, maybe we were in it together. Your words, Hopkirk, not mine. But perhaps I should check the stock. Better safe than sorry. It's locked. Better safe than sorry. The key's in the porter's room. Can you get it, then? I'll be back in ten minutes with the inventory. Did he call me a dimwit? Don't worry, son. He's the dimwit. You men were off in five minutes. Uh, very good, sir. I'll have the van round the front. No need. I've commandeered something more suitable. Five minutes. Right. Right, here we go. Now, I'll go and get the tent out of the van. You start wheeling these round and be discreet. I can't think of anything else. I even dreamt about it last night. <laughs> it's getting ridiculous. Well, you've got it bad, that's for sure. Yeah. What can I do? Can you help me with it, Doctor? Can oh, you? Uh, oh, Samantha, it's only a trolley setting. Well, you can do it. You know you can. But I've read this book about a hundred times. Maybe if you could go through it with me this morning, show me where I'm going wrong. Sure. Except, aren't you going out with Mr. Rose? Oh. Yeah. Oh, Alan, I know you're a busy man, but zipping around hospital corridors on a scooter's a bit extreme, isn't it? It's not mine. He was joking, Alan. What are you up to? Right, come on, before anyone sees us. Too late. You've been rumbled. Ah. Do they really need all these mirrors? Even I couldn't use this many. There you go, Mr. Harper. You find everything ship ship. We'll see.
very drowsy. <gasps> Severe cyanosis. Keep the oxygen coming. What's going on? What's wrong with her? Do something! She's dying! She's not going to die, Brian. Look at her! Try and stay calm, Brian. You're upsetting her. Cyanosis is worsening. All right, she's unconscious. We need a ventilator. Nerve conduction severely affected. There's paralysis of the respiratory muscles. I'm going to give some tension on. Tell me what's going on, please. I think Tina is suffering from myasthenia gravis. It's a rare condition. Basically, it affects the signals from the brain to the muscle. The nerve should be sending a message to the muscles to contract. But in Tina's case, the message isn't getting through properly. She's not moving. She will now. Sniper shooting your hat off every five minutes. You'd be up there quick enough then, eh? Ha! Right, let's go. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. It's a miracle. Well, don't expect too much. The problem isn't resolved yet, I'm afraid. Thought she was going to. Oh, no, please. Take that. Please. All right, the paralysis is returning. Keep it ventilated, please. Make sure. Sorry, could you? Why don't we leave the Doctor to it, Brian? But I want to stay. It's for the best. Come on. Foundling Tippet. Ambulance will be here in five minutes. Now that is a beauty. Really taken hold, hasn't it? Likes his job, doesn't he? He does, rather. Best I've seen in a while. Well, you can keep it after, seeing as you're so keen on it. <laughs> Mount it if you like. <laughs> Comedian, eh? I'm going to have to watch you. Right, team. Action stations. The monster has found him, spotted him at the side of the road. I don't think he would have got much further. Does his fiance know he's here? She's on her way. How's that? It's all in the follow-through. Easy when you know how. Well, I'll follow him through if he's not careful. Could do with a hand here, Mr Rose. It's not that easy, just the two of us, you know. Oh, of course I boy. Dr Klein. What? You think uh, someone could take out the slack here? Ken and his little helper are having a bit of a job of it. Here's an idea. Why don't you put that silly stick down and give them a hand yourself? Good idea. Point taken. Not a stick, you know. It's a club. Oh, really? Very direct, isn't she? Len? Sorry, Doctor, I couldn't stop her. Is she going to be all right? It's a bit too early to say, I'm afraid. If you could... Why don't we leave the Doctor to it? He can come back later. Is that all right? Looks fine to me. Ah, the patient. Oh, you've made a good job of this. <laughs> Track on, shall we? I'm going to give you three little jabs so you don't feel anything during the operation, all right? Let me know if you're worried about anything. I know this is rather an odd situation. Nothing to worry about. You're in good hands. The best. Right. Thank you, Doctor. asked him about the bottle in his coat, but he can't remember anything. Plenty of workplaces stock that sort of thing. Do you know what Len does for a living? Works in a wet fish shop, apparently. Not a lot of call for industrial alcohol there. No. Um, how about Eddie? It's a factory worker, I think. Have you got your doubts about him? To be honest, yeah. He asks after his friends, but if you ask me, he's more concerned about himself. Guilty conscience? Could be. Mm. Len? You shouldn't have come. Ah, uh, Miss Bird, may I have a word, please? How can you say that? It's 
leave me alone, Shirley. I'm no good for you. Not anymore. The wedding's off. I don't understand. I'm blind. Okay? Now do you understand? Rather a good job, if I say so myself. Hark at him. Is he always like this? Afraid so. Superiority complex, a classic case. When you've got it, flaunt it. Oh, poor soul. He thinks we're interested. <laughs> I do, actually. You've certainly been doing a lot of gassing about me. Ah. Gotcha. Good. It was gonna be all right, but it's not all right. It's not. He's the same Len you fell in love with, Shirley. It'll just take him a while to adjust. That's all. But you heard him. The wedding's off. How could you be so stupid? Um, sorry. We're getting Len ready for transfer. I thought you might want his coat. In case you were thinking of going with him. That's not Lent. Try to keep your foot up for a couple of days and, uh, well, just don't walk unless you really have to. Well arranged for a district nurse to pop by and change the dressing. You have been very kind. I can't thank you enough. Just doing our job, Ada. Enjoyed every minute of it. Make sure you look after yourself. That's all the thanks I need. Well said. Mind you, one of those almonds wouldn't go, miss. Of course, love. You help yourself. Thank you. Actually, I, uh... Not bad, eh? Ha! <laughs> I'm going to have Tina transferred to the neurology department at Ashville General. I thought she was going to die. Is this going to keep happening to her? Well, she will need to be on medication, but once her condition's stabilised, there's absolutely no reason why she shouldn't live a perfectly normal life. There will be other competitions. When teen is better, you can knock them dead. Yeah, sure. She's in quite a state. I don't think Len meant what he said about the wedding being off. He's in shock. And Shirley's taken him at his word. I wish there was something I could say to her. Those words are hard to find, unfortunately. It must all seem very bleak to her at the moment. Back again. Ah! I heard they found the young chap. How's he doing? Not too good. He'll live, but unfortunately, the methanol has already damaged his optic nerves. He's lost most of his sight. Oh, what a terrible waste. Terrible! <sighs> well, maybe in time. He'll come to realize how lucky he is. Lucky? He's still alive. Things could be a lot worse. He'll still smell the roses, touch the snow, hear children laughing, taste his sweetheart's lips. What he needs to remember is it's not what is lost that's important, but what he's still got. I take it this is yours? I've got a hunch Len took the wrong one when he left the beach. Am I wrong? Sorry, what's your pint? The bottle was in your pocket. If I was a betting man, I'd say it came from the factory where you work. Well, time to come clean, Eddie. I didn't mean any harm. I really didn't. Tell me what happened. <laughs> I wanted to do something special for Len. I saw that alcohol at work and, um... I put it in the punch that we made at beach. So that moonshine we got from Cock and Sparrow, I just didn't think it was strong enough, man. You didn't tell the others what you'd done? No. Well, your symptoms weren't as severe. You obviously didn't drink as much as them. I was trying to be responsible. I'm Len's best man, I was in charge. I thought it'd be a laugh. I didn't realise what I'd done when it was too late. You should have said something. I know. I just couldn't bring myself to admit being such an idiot. 
And then when he thought it was down to that Porter's brother-in-law, well, I wanted it to be his fault too. We're talking to Shirley earlier. She's a lovely girl, you know. That's why I'm not going to marry her. She deserves better than I can offer now. Maybe you should let her be the judge of that. Maybe so should you. Len? Who's that? It's me. Alan. All right, mate. Never seen you at work before. I still haven't, eh? I'm sorry about what's happened. I really am. Yeah, well, there's nothing you could have done. No. I picked your scooter up. It's safe. Great. Guess I might get a few quid for it. Is Shirley here? In fact, maybe you want to buy it. I mean, I'll give you a good price. I'll be back in a minute, Len. It's not as if I'm going anywhere, is it? Shirley and Len, are they in love? I mean, really in love? Well, yeah. Yeah, they really are. I thought so. Come on, we've got some work to do. I mean, I think the best thing that you can do, really, is just to let her know that you're there. I mean, that would be the best tonic for her. Sure. 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 You really do mean a lot to her, you know. I think, um... I think having you around could, you know... Anyway. Have you got a phone I could use? Something I said. Sorry, I didn't mean you. Oh, good. Oh. Glad to hear it. Looks as if you've had a tough day. Oh, that's nice. Mm, well, that's just a taster. What you really need, Miss Weatherall, is the full course of treatment. I don't think so, do you? Trust me. I'm a doctor. Well, how about you come back to my place this evening? I'll work better from home. Actually, uh, I'd better not. Some sort of problem? No, not as such. Ah. That sounds ominous. It's just. We can't do whatever we want, whenever we want, Gordon. Can't we? Not anymore, no. We've got your children to think of. Ah. And I don't want to take the place of their mother, you know that. But I just think that we ought to be clear about what we're doing. Yes. Yes, I suppose so. There. Well, it looks as though it's finally got through to you. Mr. Rose is to be commended. Hey, you, uh, you forgot this. You left it by the phone. Your little black book. You're arranging a replacement for the competition. How'd you get on? Sandy Tate. I'm sorry, Tina. It's too good an opportunity to miss. Sandy. She's good. Lucky she's free at such short notice. Still, I suppose it helps that you didn't waste any time. You ought to go. I'll see you at the other end. Don't bother. I don't mind. There's no need, really. Not anymore. Goodbye, Brian. Alan, I'm warning you. All will be revealed. Right, where are we? We're at your scooter. What? Is this some kind of sick joke? You know I can never ride again. I can't even see the thing. It doesn't matter. Shirley. You shouldn't be here. Oh, yes, I should. What did you say to her?
You've switched the names round. I still want to marry you, Len Tebbit. Could be a rough ride. We can handle it. I'll drive. Just hold on tight. The tighter, the better. Come here. Mr. Harper, stock take was an order, I take it? Uh, yes. Spot on, actually. I thought it might be. Your brother-in-law was here earlier. He left a message. He says you owe him for the moonshine he had to chuck out because it was harmless and you were the one who put the police onto him. It's a few quid he's after. Well, money's not important, Mr. Harper. Now, love, that's important.